There have been a few requests on the forum about how to track a character in a video and have a highlight or glow follow them on the screen. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to track a person or object in a video file and attach a traveling mask to add a traveling shape or glow. This can all be done in the standard version of HitFilm Express. First, import your video into the media bin. You can either drag to the timeline or use the trimmer to set an in and out point for the area you want to work with. Then drag from the trimmer to the timeline. Before you continue, make sure to save a copy of your work. I always recommend saving incremental copies as work progresses and append a number to the file. In this case, mask tracking-001. Now, make a cut where you want the glow to come in. Right click and make a composite shot. It's probably a good idea to give your composite shot a name. I'll name this one Glow Track. Once in the composite shot, right click on your media and duplicate it. I'm also going to add a point that will contain the tracking data so you can apply that to the mask layer. Rename your duplicate clip and the original so that you can clearly see which is which. I'll also rename the point to Tracking. For the time being, I'll disable the original track from view. Then, on the duplicate layer, expand the properties and select the green plus icon next to Tracks. This brings up the Tracker function, and the Track Properties tab should now be visible in the same window where the trimmer was. Since the video is moving around a lot, and the camera is not stationary, a double point track will be needed. Notice in the viewer window, the layer tab is now active, and you can see the two trackers. You'll need to position those where they can find the most movement in the scene, but still be able to get a good track. Use your scroll mouse to zoom in to better reposition the trackers. You'll want to pick areas of the video that have good contrast so the tracker won't get lost during playback. Dragging inside the red square will let you move the tracker. Position or resize the red square so that slightly more than covers the area to be tracked. Widen the green square so there is plenty of room for the tracker not to lose the pixels it is trying to lock onto. Position the second tracker on another high contrast area of the video. Once you are set up, use the drop-down arrow all the way to the right to select Scale to Fit. Now you are ready to track the scene. Go back to the Track tab window and hit the Play Forward arrow. If you have good contrast for the trackers, the track should automatically finish when it gets to the end of the clip. If the track stops, it means a tracker has lost the pixels it was trying to keep track of. Scroll back on the video to where the track started to fail. Reposition the tracker that slipped, and hit the forward track arrow again. Since we are now trying to go for a glow around the character, it isn't super critical that the track needs to be dead on, but it should stay pretty close. Scroll through the timeline and check the accuracy of the track. Once you're satisfied, then go back to the Track Properties tab, and under Step 2, Apply to Layer, leave the purpose at Transform, and make sure X and Y position is checked. In the Layer drop-down, select the tracking layer that contains the point we renamed earlier, and click Apply. This will copy the XY data from the tracker to the point. Open up the Tracking Point Transform properties and under Position, you'll see that every video frame has a keyframe that contains the tracking data. Back in the Viewer panel, switch back to the Viewer tab. Now under the Duplicate layer, open up the properties and select Masks. 
Select the Freeform Mask Drawing tool on the left of the viewer window and draw a mask around the character. This will isolate the character in its own layer that will be overlaid on top of the original video. Go back to the tracking point and highlight position. Then right click copy. Now under the duplicate layer, paste the data on the position property for the mask. This will probably change the position of the mask on the screen, but simply modify the anchor point X and Y properties to reposition the mask. Once that's done, play the file in the viewer, and you'll see that the mask basically stays with the character. We just need to modify the mask over time to compensate for how the camera changes position with the character. To modify the mask, put the slider back to the beginning of the timeline and create a keyframe at frame 1 for path. Scroll down the video until the mask shape needs readjusting. With the freehand drawing tool still highlighted in the viewer window, drag the points to make up the mask to adjust the shape as needed. Repeat the process down the timeline. And make incremental copies of your work as you go. Once you've made all the adjustments to the mask shape, it's time to add a glow to the mask shape. In this case, I'll pick Neon Glow and drag that onto the duplicate video layer that has the mask. Go to the Effects property for the glow and give it a color. Now, go to the original video layer and turn visibility back on, and you'll see a glow around your character as they move through the scene. You can add more glow effects to the duplicate layer to achieve multiple looks and tweak it to be what you want. This is where we just play around with different effects and it's important to learn what they do. If you find your mask shape is too chunky or has square corners, play with the roundness and feather strength of the mask properties to get smoother edges. Now we've got a pretty good glow that follows the character. Now back in the Editor tab, play back the timeline and the glow will pop on where we made our cut to start the composite shot. If you want to dissolve on the glow, simply drag on Cross Dissolve from the Transitions video group under the Effects tab. Make sure the Cross Dissolve straddles the cut on both sides of the video clips and you might need to zoom in by positioning the scroll bar over the area and use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Experiment with using one of the other video functions such as wipe or iris instead of dissolve. Also experiment with adding effects to the duplicate video layer that has the isolated character and the glow effect. Once you have your character or object isolated in its own layer, you're only limited by your imagination on what you can do with it. Good luck and happy compositing!